Hello my lovers, tis I again. Now, this is the second part of the video in which I'm going to be covering the tracking of the pre-selector with the radio. So before I, I go any further, um, arise, comments arising from uh, the previous video, there seems to be some confusion over how the pre-selector tracks the radio. And in particular, there is a menu item in Power SDR for Heroes and people uh, seem to be under the impression and naturally so I guess that uh, this function if you like is what is how the uh, the radio is con the, sorry the pre-selector is controlled so if you click the heroes menu item in the pre-selector what you actually get is uh, this menu which would allow you to control the pre-selector and this is very important by the I squared C interface and only by the I squared C interface. The tiny preselector uh, has the I squared interface which can connect directly to the back of the flex radio. Um, and also th its bigger brother, the SCR preselector cat, also has the the uh, the I squared C interface. But the caveat is that using the I squared C interface the preselector will not track the radio not at all. You can control the preselector using the interface, selecting the different bands, using the slider to actually manually tune and peak the preselector, selecting uh, the uh, antenna etc bypass. But this function in PowerSDR does not allow the preselector to track the radio and it's imperative that you understand this. In order to have the preselector track the radio, we have to use the CAT interface. And I think that uh, Juan has uh, recently introduced a, a USB interface for the smaller SCR, or the tiny preselector. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on that, but for now, I'm dealing just purely with the SCR preselector CAT, uh, as per the, uh, the first video. So, moving swiftly onwards, in order to use a, the preselector as a tracking device, you need to connect it by COM port or serial RS232. And when you connect the preselector up to your computer, it has a USB 2 interface on it. You uh, install it, load the driver up, and it uh, enumerates as a COM port. Obviously, it selects its own, but of course, you can change the number if necessary. Now, if you are using the radio without any radio control software, you're not using CAT for logging or anything like that, then it is possible to connect the PowerSDR directly to the preselector. But, and here's the big but, if, like many operators now, you like to be able to control your, uh, your digital modes software, and your ham radio deluxe or other uh, cat control of the radio or uh, l connect uh, your other favorite logging programs by cat so that you can enter the frequency mode etc then it's necessary with the flex to uh, implement virtual com ports uh, there are a, a number of different virtual com port providers uh, about uh, some free some not I'm using Windows 8 here so uh, I encounter problems with some. Um, in my particular instance I was lucky and I was able to use the um, virtual serial ports emulator by uh, Etalogic and uh, I have a 64-bit license. The 32-bit version is free but the 64-bit version requires a license uh, which has to be paid for. So the preselector has enumerated on COM4 so we can get rid of that and what I've done, and this is quite important, it, there is another application which Flex users are quite familiar with called Data Decoder or DDUtil. And uh, this is uh, the glue, if you like, which holds the virtual station like the Flex together because it allows us to connect various COM ports to various things such as 
here for example I've only just recently set it back up in Windows 8 so not everything is operational here at the moment but radio control program 1 is ham radio deluxe so the uh, flex is currently on COM10 of this COM port pair and DD util is connected to uh, COM20 and that creates a connection from uh, DDU through to the power SDR and then what it will do is it can bounce out your COM ports to other programs so you know, as you can see here uh, I've got uh, a number of virtual COM port pairs set up and here is the the critical bit DDUtil has a particularly useful function which I'll come to in a moment but basically for setting up the, the tracking what is necessary is to have a at least as a minimum a COM port pair um, and for a moment we'll just pretend that this is the COM4 and COM9 is a COM port pair if you like in order to be able to connect the pre-selector to the radio SCAT system what we would do in a normal instance is to use DD Util's passive listener you select your COM port of your pre-selector and for a moment we'll just pretend that our pre-selector is on COM9 there's a reason why I've done it this way as you know from the device manager it was actually showing us COM4 but just for the sake of argument for a moment we'll pretend that it was enumerated on COM9 so we select COM9 then and here is the beautiful bit there are only a few cat commands the pre-selector uses the Kenwood protocol so what we do is having selected the pre-selectors COM port here in the passive listener section we then enable the slave radio we set it to Kenwood and we make sure that the uh, the speed uh, the data configuration is uh, correct so uh, the pre-select operates at 9600 so uh, this is the particular one that we want uh, 9600 uh, 810 and that under normal circumstances is enough to have the pre-selector tracking the radio and if you notice when I change a band there is a, a momentary delay when the noise floor is low that's because the pre-selector is tuned to a different frequency um, and then it follows momentarily the DD util has a built-in intentional delay uh, in this function so there will inevitably be a short delay there we go low there we go 40 low high here we go. So each time I change to a band, a pre-selector follows the radio. And as I tune, unfortunately you can't hear the pre-selector. There's a very, very quiet click you can hear coming from inside the pre-selector when it, uh, it's changing the capacitor values. But as you see, the pre-selector is tracking the radio very nicely. And so that is how the magic is completed as far as having the pre-selector track the radio is concerned. But, there is a but, there is another rather handy little function which is a serial MAC port uh, function in DDUtil here. Now, if we go to macros, as you can see, there are a whole bunch of buttons which uh, power SDR users can use to change mode, change frequency, change filter settings, you know, set up a macro so that it sets the radio to a specific frequency, like maybe for JT65 and this, as an example. Sets the filter width, sets the power level, uh, you can set all of, the, uh, all of the radio's functions. Well, if we use the serial MAC port and also connect it to the pre-selector, Okay, stay with me. We can input macro commands which not only go to the radio but also can go to the pre selector. And this is where it gets really handy because if you're wanting to use the USB connection in the pre selector and have it track the radio, 
you can't operate its other functions manually and neither can you use its partner application that comes with it. You can only use that uh, if you are using the partner application with the preselector manually. So functions like the attenuator, 6, 12 and 18 dB attenuator, very tasty indeed, and a 20 dB preamp, also potentially very useful. And so by implementing the cat commands of the preselector into the macros, I'm able then to control the preselector's functions from inside ddutil. Preamp on, preamp off. Preamp on, preamp off. Not that you would want to use a preamp on 18 meters. Attenuator, 6, 12, and 18 dB. Very, very useful indeed on top band 80, 60, and 40 meters. Extremely useful indeed. Let's go to 40 meters a second. Switch the attenuator, 6, 12, 18 dB. And uh, attenuator off, of course, very handy. The preselector has two antenna ports, so you can actually select another antenna, should you want to. I don't have anything connected to antenna 2. And as a final example, uh, I've got these JT65 frequencies set up, so if I want to go to uh, 20 meters JT65, so if I just click there, there we go. I won't bore you with the macro commands themselves, they are documented in the manual. Oh, of course, and it also locks the VFO, because I'm forever tuning myself off frequency with the mouse by accident. Right, moving swiftly onwards, we've dealt with tracking of the radio. Automatic tracking. Uh, of course, yeah, that was the other thing that I needed to say. Because uh, you can only connect one thing to a serial port, in order to be able to implement this particular feature of being able to track the radio and also command the preselector manually, it's necessary to split the COM port. So this is where we go back to reality on the, on the serial ports. The preselector is on COM4. I have created in VSPE a splitter function. What this does is it splits the COM port so that uh, the, the physical real COM port it's COM4 and on COM9 you can have multiple connections and that is the real trick of this particular instrument to, to split the COM port. So now the passive listener is on COM9 tracking the radio. Oops, there we go. And the macro port is also on COM9 allowing me to write macros, two buttons to control the preselector. Isn't that sweet? Eh? It took me a little while to figure it out, but uh, we got there in the end. Okay, moving swiftly onwards. The final part of this video was going to be devoted to the calibration routine for the preselector. However, uh, I'm running out of time really for an HD movie, so I'm going to move that off to a separate video of its own right. So once again, thank you for your time. I hope that the video has been useful and informative, and that uh, you will be better informed uh, about the functionality of this device. So, sub threes, look after yourself. G7CNF, signing clear.